evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Barry Tanzi, and I'm Chief Executive of St. Mark Holmes PLC. Um, we're who we are, what we do. We're, we started life uh, back in the year 1999, as initially as a secured contracting EIS vehicle, raising money under the government's enterprise investment scheme. And around about 2007, having satisfied our trade requirements with the HMRC, um, believing the residential property market as an investor rather than a contractor was the way forward, we changed tack and we now are a residential-led property developer. Um, we focus on London and the southeast, predominantly London. We have had some uh, projects in the West Country as well, but uh, we believe London and South East is, is where we should be, and that's, that's our focus of operations currently and will be for the foreseeable future. Target market. Um, we like to deliver stock at uh, below £1,000 a square foot. That market is, is a lot more active than, than above £1,000 a square foot, as you'll probably all know from the press. Um, we've always focused on uh, mid-range property market rather than prime or super prime. We, over the last 12 to 18 months, are f we've, we've further focused our operation to uh, fit in with the government help to buy scheme, which uh, some of you may know, uh, others may not, but it's, it's uh, a facility where the government provides support to first-time buyers to get onto the property ladder within London and the South East. Um, within the M25, there's a requirement for the ticket price of, of the uh, property sale at £600,000 or below. That market remains quite active at the moment. Projects typically between 10 and 50 units. Um, we have done, um, historically we have done property developments of, I think the smallest we did was eight units, and uh, the largest we've done to date is 41 units, so within 10 to 50 is our sweet spot. Business model, we, we tend to joint venture as opposed to taking developments on our own right. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go through the slides in the show this evening. The team. We have a small, professional, experienced team. Uh, I'm a uh, qualified accountant along with our FD, Sean Ryan, who's also a qualified accountant. Um, our chairman, Bernard Tanzi, is uh, a civil engineer and structural engineer by profession. And uh, we have quite an extensive experience in both the construction and development industry. I personally, um, once I'd qualified as an accountant I'm with Grant Thornton, I moved straight into the construction and development industry and I've been there for the last 21 years. And um, Sean, I think, has been uh, as our FD and he's been with the, uh, within the construction development industry for over 25 years. Uh, Bernard, our chairman, has been in the uh, construction development industry for 30 plus years. So. We've done a lot, we've seen a lot, and I believe we have the, both the technical and the um, financial experience to undertake property development, and I think we do a, a pretty good job. So the business model, residential-led property development. Uh, for those of you who don't understand that phrase, most of suburban and urban development within London and the South East tends to be mixed-use development where you get planning permission for a residentially-led scheme with some commercial on the ground floor, and that tends to be the typical project which we get involved in. Uh, we, like, we take an equity participation with our uh, joint venture partners, usually between 40 and 50%. We like to get to 50, as dependent on capital availability at the time, but certainly the target is to get to 50%. Sometimes we don't quite get there, but I think the smallest involvement we would look to have is, is 40%. We like to have a, a large slice of the pie in that, in that uh, development. We structure our development agreements uh, with our partners through uh, special purpose vehicles. Um, for those of you who have experience of development, uh, you'll understand that that tends to be the way development takes place within uh, special purpose vehicles. It's a clean, tidy mechanism for, for structuring the investments of joint venture partners in a, in a property development. Our partners manage and provide construction and sales management, so the, so the partners tend to have construction and sales expertise, uh, and we, they provide, the, provide capital as well as we do, but, but we 
tend to partner with people with that construction and sales capability in-house. Um, spread of projects, we like to commit to and diversify our capital deployment into uh, a number of schemes. Rather than one or two larger schemes, we prefer having a spread of three or four or five schemes, um, depending on, 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 on what's available at the time. But that's our, that's our target and that's what we like to do. And that typically involves an investment of between one and two million pounds of equity into a project at any given, at any given time. Uh, projects tend to be capital uh, committed up front, and um, that's what our, our funders require. Um, so our, we introduce our equity day one, um, together with our partner, and then the bank uh, fund the, the balance to completion. Project due diligence, so what do we do? We spend a long time and a lot of time uh, scrutinizing appraisals and value reports, um, making a, a lot of uh, meetings, a lot of visits to sites, a lot of visits to estate agents, um, a lot of internet searching, etc. And we will only involve ourselves after, after being approached on, a, on, a, on a, a project that provides a target return of 20, 15 to 20% in GDV. 15% being our lowest benchmark, we won't get involved in a project that I would offer less than that. Um, we also have a secondary, a secondary benchmark achieving 20 to 25% on total cost committed. Uh, again, 20% is the bare minimum, 25% is what we really look for. We spend a lot of time with agents um, determining sales values, appraising uh, the, the, the saleability of the product. Um, an appraisal can show any number on a page, but actually getting out there and, and, and getting a real appraisal of, of what's going to be achieved on a project is all important. In the end of the day, we can build a project, but we've got to sell it, and we, we, we really focus and, and drill down into that for quite, quite, in a quite a detailed way. And of course, during the course of the project, we spend a lot of time on going monitoring, uh, visiting site, liaising with our, our joint venture partners continuously, um, to make sure the project is going as it should and, and dealing with problems as they arise. Uh, strange slide here, but the, the, uh, I suppose just focusing our, our, our operations ten have tended to be over the last few years very much focused in, in West and South West London, uh, Wimbledon, uh, Ealing, uh, Twickenham, Richmond, uh, that sort of corridor. The market has been pretty robust in that area and, and we've done reasonably well there, so we've continued to focus on that, on that particular area. I uh, thought it'd be a good idea to uh, give you an example of a typical project. This is a project that's currently on site. It's coming out of the ground as, as we speak. Uh, it's based in Hounslow, um, 34 uh, all private residential unit scheme. Um, it's located five minutes from the uh, Piccadilly line, um, and it's a two-year project. It's, again, it's, it's very much within the focus area of government help to buy eligibility of under 600k. I think the product range will be coming to market between 350 and 450k. So very, very affordable in, in the context of the help to buy scheme, which runs till 2020. Uh, the project is an 18-month build. Uh, we're already out of, out, of, out of the ground on that project, and we're, we're hopeful to complete that uh, in May of next year. Um, we adopt, a, let's say it's a two-year project, 18-month build, and we allow ourselves a sales tail at the end just to make sure that we're, we're, uh, we allow ourselves sufficient times for sales to be achieved. We do mark it off plan, um, so a certain percentage of the pro product will be sold off plan. Uh, the overall gross development value of the scheme is 12.6 million, and that required a totally equ total equity input of 3.75 million, and we took uh, a 40% share in that, pro in, in that scheme, and that required us uh, committing and deploying capital of 1.5 million day one. A um, few slides here, of just a couple of examples of recent schemes. This is a scheme in, 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 in um, St. Margaret's, it's close to Twickenham, for those not familiar with the area. That's another scheme we completed last year in, in Mortlake. Again, London Borough of Richmond. Um, <coughs> the scheme on your left is a scheme in Sutton, which was completed in October of last year. It's a 41 residential unit scheme over commercial on the ground floor. And on the right uh, is a scheme in, in Clapham. 
Um, the Clapham Battersea Borders actually, and uh, we're coming out of the ground on that particular project as well. Financials. Earnings per share. This gives you a, some information on our, our performance over the last few years. You'll see since 2013 we've, we've improved. Um, slight dip last year, but, but again, 16.6p per share is, is, is what we hit the, the, the year end of December 16. And that, that, um, that against our current share price of a pound gives a fairly, fairly decent, decent uh, representation of, what, of how we're doing. Uh, we also pay uh, dividends annually. Um, we have raised our dividend from 3p per share up to uh, 5p uh, during 2006, and that's a strategy we would continue to, to adopt. Uh, our net asset value per share, as at the accounts of December 16, £1.31 per share. Um, that's risen quite, quite considerably over the period, you'll notice. Uh, the mid-market price per share has also risen quite, quite, quite a lot since 2013. It, uh, where I think we had a low of 35p, uh, up to a current price of a pound per share. The future. So where do we go from here, and what are we going to be doing in the next few years? Well, our objectives, our, our overall strategy is to build the company from a current balance sheet of 5.8 million to a balance sheet of 10 million. Uh, in over the next four years. Uh, we'll achieve that through uh, continuing organic growth, um, maximizing the return on existing schemes and redeploying capital as they, those schemes mature and, and the equity and, and profits are returned and reinvesting those into, into future schemes. Uh, we're also considering a debt issue um, and there's a possibility of further, further share issues. Uh, we did have a small share issue last year we raised about uh, 716k, and uh, we may look to do that in the future again to allow to allow the company to grow and for us to 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 uh, grow the balance sheet for the benefit of shareholders up to 10 million pounds. Uh, we also plan and uh, will continue to grow our dividend. Um, we distribute around about 30% of our our return. Uh, in, the f in the shape of dividends and the balance is usually retained for, for onward investment and capital redeployment. And we want to improve our share liquidity. Um, that's something we've been working with Nex on. And um, we, uh, I suppose, expanding our shareholder base will, will improve the share liquidity. And that's something we're, we're very mindful of and we're, we're constantly trying to do. And obviously reduce the share price discount to net asset value, or net asset value of £1.31 versus our share price of £1. Obviously there's, there's quite a discount there, and we're continuing to try and, and, and narrow, that, narrow that gap. And the best way we can do that as, as a management team is to deliver return and profit to, to our shareholders um, and try and uh, promote the company and, and grow the company, and hopefully that share... Uh, discount in NAV will, will, will disappear or certainly be reduced. That's it. So questions and answers. Anybody got any questions? Super, very good. Any questions again, please raise your hand and wait for uh, Peter or for Chris to come over with the microphone. Well, I'll get us going then. Um, the availability of sites, locations within the target area, yep. um, is it that it's... Uh, I have no idea. Is it a buyer's market? Are there are lots of availability. Is it they're very scarce? In terms of land? Yeah, for, for, to, to develop from. Land tends to be quite cyclical, so it's, 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 it's very dependent on, on market, uh, general market confidence. So you'll, you'll typically find around the times of election or Brexit or um, various other happenings, and, uh, you tend to find the availability of land is, is more fruitful than actually people, people tend to dispose of disposal land and we certainly deployed two projects in in the sort of three to four months after Brexit. Okay. Um, you tend to find when the mar when the market is very active and very very hot yeah. uh, availability of land decreases. I think that's a function of, of of people holding on to their land in the face of a rising market. I think they'll make more for their land if they wait to next year or the year after. Um, but also the demand is outstripping, su outstripping supply at that particular time when the market is hot and therefore 
the market is that much more competitive and that much more just difficult to secure the land. So if you have a view that there might be further market uncertainty in, in the foreseeable future or the medium yeah. term, you'd expect that to present more opportunities yes, for I, you? I, yeah, as, as an SME, the, the, I suppose the biggest, the biggest issue we face uh, in terms of development is, is, is having sufficient capital to deploy, mm. having more capital to deploy. Currently, there are, there are quite a few sites out there at the moment. Uncertainty about the election, post-Brexit hangover. There is availability of land there. It's, uh, and in the right locations, the, 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 we believe that there's a great opportunities, but we only have a certain amount of money and we can only deploy that money. So uh, we're, we're, we're constantly looking and appraising schemes and, and being approached to, to venture on schemes, but you know, and, and until we have the sufficient cash resources to, to redeploy, we, there's very little we can do, you know. And so if you hit that 10 million um, target, yeah. would you look to have more projects of the same sort of scale, or would you try and go up to larger project values? Good question. Or, or both? Um, I, th I think, I, when I said our, our targets was between 10 and 50 units, I think, I think we'd like to retain that target, but I would see there'd be more of schemes at 40 to 50 units rather than 10 or 20 or 25 units. There's obviously certain economies, the larger the, larger the scheme, uh, the, more, the more economies um, one achieves, the better the return. Um, and with the joint venture partners you've worked with, the, you mentioned to have both the construction and the sales capacity. Yeah. Um, have you kind of ended up kind of budding up with anybody? Have you got kind of partners who you tend to work with again and again? Or yes, I think, yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's like everything, everyone in business, you know, you, 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 you develop a relationship, things work well, you tend to, you tend to stick with them and they, they come back to see if you'll partner with them on projects and, 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 and you do because that's the way, you know, it's like all business, you know. You want to deal with people you can trust and people who, who do what they say they'll do and who are good partners and who don't let you down. And yeah. My final question is about the... Um, unless anyone else wants to jump in for a second. I've got a couple here. Okay, so let's start with lady here, please. Chris? Thank you. Uh, Hi. Um, so with regards to the bond issue, Yes. do you know roughly when that might be available and what sort of security well, it's, will be on that? Well, it's, very, it's, it's, it's early stages. We're, we're currently kind of having initial discussions on it, so it's probably a little bit premature to talk about it in terms of an actual timetable. Um, but the, the discussions we've had have been quite positive. Um, we've had discussions with a number of, a number of, of providers and, and <coughs> they've been quite positive. So in the, I think it's something we'll be looking to, to, to bring fruition over the course of the coming months. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, Tim? I noticed you mentioned that uh, there was a residential and commercial offer. Is that something you yeah. see more of? The, they, they want to combine residential and commercial. Yeah, I think it, certainly in, in, in regenerating areas of London, and I include, you know, lots of areas we all know that, you know, even the scheme I showed you in, in, in Twickenham, um, the government are anxious and sort of, because you have planning policy, which you have an existing commercial use, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to get your planning permission through um, to get to get a mixed use scheme, so protecting the commercial use whilst also providing much needed accommodation. So that's the way planning authorities generally get. Is that get something you want to get involved with on the commercial side? Uh, in Is terms, it, of, well, I mean, if you're packaging the thing together, are you getting involved in the commercial offer as well? Well, we do as as as, as joint venture partners into the into the into the project. We we take on a, a vested interest in both the residential and the commercial. Ah. So we're we're we're. We're in it together, and we 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 residential residential led. So we would be reluctant to get involved in a in a if you like a, cons, a commercial led scheme with with a minor amount of residential or a purely commercial scheme. That's not our our our, our model. We're, we're residential. Uh, that's what we've been doing. That's what we know, and that's what we'll stick to. Gentleman at the back, please. Thank you, Chris. Hello. You're, you're currently um, a developer. Are you um, considering the buy to, to sorry, the, the build to rent sector? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, a lot of a lot of press about that. Um, I think the build to rent sector is, is, is a good sector. There's been a lot of press about it. I think it only works at at, at very large scales, and that's why you're, you're seeing a lot of um, a lot of big sort of pension funds and, and foreign and foreign hedge funds etc. coming into the UK, setting up vehicles to try and buy three and four hundred unit projects to be able to to bring them through because it's, it, is, it is a model that works 
on the scale. The returns tend to be a little bit, a little bit lower than by buying an individual flat and, and renting it out. Um, they manage it and run the estate. It's a very mature model in, in for example, the United States. Um, but it, it's probably a bit big for us. Uh, and we, our business model to date has always been to sell, not to hold. So we buy, develop, sell. Um, others decide to buy, develop and hold. Uh, we believe the best value for our shareholders is, is actually to, to build it out, sell it, move on to the next project and create more value down the line. Any other questions, please? Um, could you tell us the, uh, the discount on the, uh, on the, on the NAV? You said it was, it, your share price is currently about a quid. Yep. And uh, the valuation, you think, what, £1.32? £1.31. Yeah. £1, £1. Any, any comment on that? Is it just because there's not a huge amount of trading? Just finding you'd like to have it the same, wouldn't you? I mean, or, or, or higher. But it, uh, th there has been a consistent, uh, I suppose, consistent market approach to developers to historically discount them to net asset value um, or discount from, from share price down to net asset value. Um, I'm not quite sure actually why that always exists because you know what you, what you're saying is that well your 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 business is 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 not worth what it, what it's what, what you're saying it's worth and in the end you know we're constantly turning our money our average project is 18 months to two years and it's moved on to the next scheme and it generates returns I suppose that the uncertainty of of markets the uncertainty of Brexit. Uh, changing dynamics of tax policy in relation to sort of stamp duty and, and investor reliefs and, on, on interest, they it causes a bit of a hangover in, in, in it. And you said the the help to buy scheme is running to twenty twenty, is that right? Twenty twenty, yeah. So you've got, I guess, what another year to get projects to completion to get and project. sale before Correct, yeah. that then it then looks like yeah. it's going to cut off. Do you have any have a bit more expertise on, on, on this than anyone else in the room probably? But the political likelihood of that either being extended or something else coming in, um, it, what, do you know what the industry's well, I, I, sentiment is? Yeah, I suppose we'll it'll, it'll have to see what happens on Thursday as well. But yes. it, 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 <coughs> I, think, I, I do think that you know, the reality of, of home ownership, certainly in London and the South East, is that government policy is always going to be, uh, certainly for the, for the foreseeable future, is always going to be trying to incentivise people to get onto the property ladder because there are so, there's so many people that aren't on it. And any incentives that central government can can give to try and support that, uh, I would imagine, will continue for the foreseeable future because, you know, to, you know, there just isn't the supply coming onto the system to satisfy the required demand. And, and as long as that continues, um, the government will 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 be trying various different ways to try and get first-time buyers and 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 others onto the property ladder. They want home ownership, and they've got to try and, and create ways. So, in two thousand and twenty, who knows what the market would be like, where we'll be? But I would, I would be very surprised if that that policy wasn't extended or uh, morphed into another style of, of, of support. Okay. Any any final questions at the front here, please, David? Uh, do you still Hi. see plenty of opportunities within the target market, target geography, which seems to be sort of out of London, M25 sort of area? Yes, I think I think as 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 prices escalated over the last, particularly over the last five years, um, say for the last year, um, particularly in central London, people were driven out. Um, so what we were finding is is that I mean, use the example of a scheme in Wimbledon we were involved in and so, sold very well. We were also involved in a, in, a, in a scheme in Sutton, which I showed you. And what, what we noticed was a lot of the people who were coming and buying in Sutton, two miles down the road from Wimbledon, were being forced out of Wimbledon because they, they couldn't actually afford to get onto the, for the ticket price there. So they were obviously having to move further and further afield. So we believe that actually zone three, four, and five will, will, will remain quite strong because it's just so difficult for, for, for the young people to get onto the property ladder. They have to go that bit further out. So. Focusing on areas where transport is, is good, um, people want to be five, ten minute walk to the station and into central London for work in, you know, door to door. They don't want to want to be more than sort of 40, 45 minutes. So targeting those areas, is, is, we're always mindful of that. I mean, it, to be honest, it's one of the first things that, that you do in a project appraisal. You know, you get the numbers in, you have a quick look at the numbers, 
how does it stack up? And the next question is, okay, where's the nearest station? That's a really Any other questions, please? Gentlemen here. Uh, could you tell me what percentage of the shares you own yourself? Personally? Yeah. I own uh, the management team together. I knew someone was going to ask me this. Uh, is 25.12% of, of the overall share capital in issue. I own, I own about 2.5. Sean, you'll probably, Sean's our FD over there. Sean, you know my exact figure. I have 115,000 shares in the company. Okay, thank so. you. Okay, any other questions? That was really good. Thank you very much indeed, Barry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.